Well, would you look at that? Plastic in the throttle body. Welcome back to the channel guys. We're back to work on my dad's 2018 Stinger GT2. We just replaced the cracked parking brake in the hub. And I hope this isn't too much of an issue, but this is not the same one as this one. I ordered the new parking brake based off the VIN and they sent me this one that had extra tabs on the side. But the way you actually remove this is there's this small little piece underneath this clip that you have to slide over and then pull out. We've got almost all the suspension parts. I accidentally did order two of these upper bars and I need a longer one that I ended up not ordering this long one. I ended up ordering two of these shorter ones. That's my mistake. We also ordered some bolts. So let's start slapping in that new suspension. I gotta stop at the dealership tomorrow. This bolt that runs through the backside of this lower control arm, I used the impact on, which was a huge no-no, and I ripped the threads out because there's this washer on the end with two little knobs, and I stripped them both out when I used the impact, which I shouldn't have. This is how you adjust your camber and toe. Camber being whether the wheel sticks in or out, and toe being whether the wheel kicks outwards or inwards. So we'll catch you guys at the dealership for a new bolt and washer, as well as this rear control arm that I forgot to order.
So we stopped at the dealership this morning, ordered that suspension parts. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it the same day. They'll be in here in a couple days. Ordered the suspension that I was missing and the bolts that were bent. But after we bolted in this shock just for now, I finally installed the height adjuster. That's in for good. Now there's nothing left in the interior. So we cleaned up everything, threw a little bit of carbon fiber trim just for my dad's car and threw the battery on a charger because this thing is super dead. Had to open this up to even get in the car. Before we lock up the car, we did get some mats and not just any mats, but Stinger official mats that originally come with the car, but they didn't show up with this one. And I don't know if my dad is a fan of these tux mats, so I just decided to get the OEM ones and I'll let him choose down the road. All right, that's it for the interior. Now we have a used exhaust because the one on the car is actually aftermarket and pretty loud. My dad does not want to have that while he's cruising. We'll start it up, show you guys what I'm talking about. That sounds awful. <laughs> Sounds a little whack. Battery's already junk. I tried throwing it on the charger, but we're gonna go out and get a new one under warranty. The other one would not hold a charge, so we just ended up getting a new one. To help fix that, let's open this up, throw it on the car. mid-pipe is back on the vehicle and I was planning on running the Borla muffers but as you can see the Borla mid-pipe is longer than the OEM mid-pipe also that's the only quieting this mid-pipe has anyway I'm not sure if I'm gonna weld some flanges on the end of these Borla mid-pipes and extend them or just run OEM mufflers but we'll catch you guys tomorrow as we start to take more of the car apart and get ready for framework We finally got all the suspension on. Man, that was tough. Everything is tightened down, including the bolts in the rear. Got the caliper on. So now let's throw that wheel on here, see how she fits.
All right, next day we got all the suspension on the Stinger, but I forgot to even put in the speed sensor and connect the electronic brake. So I'm gonna need to pop this wheel off again and fix those two things. And then we're gonna go for a test drive in a circle, making sure that the trans, the axles, the drive shaft, everything is working properly. So before we started, I forgot that we have a massive vacuum leak from the intercooler being completely ripped apart in the front, so let's fix it. Should have came like that from the factory. No, no, I'm totally messing around, but we got the boost leak figured out now. The reason why I was running so weird is because my neighbor came over and explained to me how this intercooler coos the air going to the intake, but I, I knew that, but then I didn't understand that this actually holds boost for the car. So when this was broken open, there was a massive boost leak causing it to run so rough, as you can see in this clip. So we got two inch going into a two inch 90, going into a two inch bar, the same on this side with a bunch of hose clamps. It should hopefully help the car run way better. Here's what's left of the intercooler. Now let's pop the car off the jack stands and start this beast up, see how she runs. start it up again. Tack is not working. I have no accelerator pedal either. And we're moving. Camera works just fine. That means the trans is good, I guess. Holy smokes, that's dark. That's dark tent. Well, if I put it in park, it sounds terrible. Look at the exhaust. Oh, dang. It's red hot back there. Yeah, the turbos are hot. Let's see what we find. All right, so we have a throttle actuator control range bank one active and that would make sense why the throttle isn't working when i press the throttle that thing so then why would this i don't know that's a throttle up. that's a throttle though yeah it runs clean oh yeah toasty i'm thinking with this throttle actuator range control performance it said that it could be dirty or clogged when i looked this coat up online so we're going to take that boot off and check in the throttle body on a good note if we go to the srs airbag everything is history so that means we did our srs stuff right so we're going to be taking off these boots pulling them back checking in there might be an issue Would you look at that plastic in the throttle body and i guarantee you it's from right there all right so now we're gonna 
crack that open and get it out of here. I'm gonna use the pliers. Wow, just that? So this is the throttle body completely open. Uh, nothing else down there. Don't know about the boost leaks. Right, so now we're gonna put that back on and hopefully it runs better. Just like that, it's back on. All right, time to fire it up, see how it runs. Go ahead, start it up. Woohoo! Do the honors. Oh yeah! no tack for some reason though she's running perfect now we're gonna shut it off man that's that's a huge relief let's see if there's any codes for the tack not working do a fault scan and uh, see what she has now no tack or heating or cooling working all right parking sensor faults ignition steering angle sensor we'll clear and see what comes back just discovered the cooled seats i forgot about these so we're checking on the live data underneath the engine control module and the water temperature's at 86C or 85.5, which is around 188 Fahrenheit. So that's good, even though the temp gauge on the dash is still not working. Same with the engine oil temperature, around the same degrees. Well, no luck underneath the hood. We looked for a temp sensor and the tack gauge, but we couldn't figure out anything. Let's start it up. It starts up so smooth. And she drives pretty nicely too. This is what's left of the post scan. No engine faults. Now we do have some more work to do to get ready for the framework up front. We're gonna lock her up for now. And once again, I'm really glad it's running right. We'll get some more work done tomorrow. So we disassembled the front, it's looking great. As you guys know, only one of the headlights was good. This headlight is destroyed beyond repair, but we have a good headlight with only a broken tab. And as you can see from the screenshot, you can order these tabs separately because they simply screw on. Thank you, Kia. Because one of these headlights is over a grand, but did pick up a used one. So let's crack it open, throw it on the car, see if it works.
Just needing to order one connector with a lead on this side, and this is for the hood latch switch. And cool enough, with the new switch came a new connector on the male side, so we don't have to replace this connector. But while I was doing that, I heard a loud snap. The mouse trap has been flipped over. Looks pretty flat, so I don't think there's anything underneath it. Yep. Nothing. First he comes into my shop, and then he takes my peanut butter off the trap, and then the trap misses him. Man, this guy is three for three. Anyway, I'm super happy we have two working headlights that we can use for framework and use when the car's done. All we gotta replace on them are these $20 tabs on each side. And I do have a few other small little plastic pieces that I do have to order as well. But for now, there she will rest until we work on the rear end, and then we're ready for framework. Now I do have a giveaway for you guys. I'm gonna scroll through the comments right here, and boom, this person just won a motorcycle keychain for your key. For the next 10 episodes, Episodes, I'm gonna be giving away a keychain in each episode and this person just won, so hit me up on Instagram. Here are almost a dozen of different choices you have. Let me know and I'll have Moto Loot ship it out to you. And some other exciting news, next video is a new build. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya.